Let the church say amen. amen. We thank God for all of you who have pressed your way out to this Bethel spot on today. And we're making some adjustments with our services as we have optional Sundays. Uh, the first and third Sundays, we're outside and some who would desire to be inside, they can also uh, share with us the worship experience. So at your discretion, man, as we move back into the sanctuary, you're welcome to be inside, amen? But somebody said they've gotten comfortable outside, so that's all right. But the first and third Sundays, we'll be preaching from the porch here. Uh, choirs will be singing from the inside, and the second and fourth Sunday, we'll be preaching inside. Let's hear from the Lord and what he has to say to us on today. As we look at Psalm 42, the second part of this psalm we will lift up in our hearing on today. On last Sunday, we decided to take a break, and the man of God blessed our hearts richly, amen, on last Sunday. But I believe it's very urgent for us to hear what Psalm 42 has to tell us about believers experience who went through some discouragement, some hurt, some brokenness, depression. And we declared the last time I stood behind this sacred desk is that if we are honest with ourselves as believers in the faith, we will admit that we go through spiritual disorder sometimes. I call it post-traumatic spiritual disorder where we have experienced certain things in our lives like trauma and divorce and death and, and grief and, and pain and sickness that will often cause us to turn our face and our conversation solely, oh God, to get some answers. I don't know if any of you today are honest enough to say, I've been there where I've been in my valley moments. But thanks be to God, I knew to keep my hands in the hands of the awesome God who sits high, but he looks low. As we look at this topic today, overcoming and working through depression, I want you to take note of about six things that I'm going to lift up in our hearing at some point. But for the onset, I want you to note something in Psalm 42 that's significant. First of all, you'll notice at the top of the psalm it says, To the chief musician, Bascal, for the sons of Korah. Some of you are probably wondering who's the son of Korah, or who the sons of Korah are. There's some group of priests that were given the responsibility to lift up Songs to the Lord. In other words, they would be like our praise and worship leader singers who will take what is written and lift it up in the sanctuary. And then if you take note, you'll also see where it says the sons of Corinth and some uh, Mescal, excuse me, it says to the chief musician, Mescal. And many of you may be wondering who is Mescal? And to be honest with you, this word is transliterated because we don't really understand the full meaning of the word. So they decided to leave it as it is, but some of us believe that it has to do with someone who's able to give us wisdom and instruction in the time of our faith journey where we encounter certain things in life. Well, I want you to focus on three areas that I'm going to tell you about. This writer went through external pressures. External pressures having to do with what other people think. You've been there. What the enemy is doing. What other people are saying. In so many words, he said, my enemies are outsiders. They're asking the question, where is your God? They're picking on me. They're taunting.
wanting me. So there's pressure at work on the outside that can cause you to go through the pressure. Pressure at work, once again, such as bad news from the doctor, financial discouragement. How many of you have been there, if you're honest? Don't know which way to turn. Some dark moments in your life. Things look dreary. Things look cloudy. But glory be to God. I know who God is. And we can be like Job and say, I know my Redeemer lives. In spite of what I'm going through, I know that I know that I know my Redeemer lives. Can anybody say, I know my Redeemer he lives in spite of what I feel we got to understand that we can't live by feeling as a matter of fact we got to understand that we have to eat the word of God daily so when we come to crisis in our lives external pressures all around us we'll have the word of God on the inside of us to tell us to lift up our voices and declare that we feel like going on. Even though troubles may be on every hand, we feel like going on. And then secondly, not only did the psalmist, the writer, deal with external pressures, he dealt with internal anxiety. Once again, if believers are honest with themselves, I believe some of us will confess that I've had my internal turmoils. Something that caused me to walk the floor all night long. Didn't know which way to turn, but I called on God. Kept holding on. And he made a way out of no way. Some of us will admit you will acknowledge the fact that you've cried late in the midnight hours when nobody else was around. But you had to look to the hill like Job and say, though he slay me, yet will I trust him. Has anybody been there? Were you dressed up on the outside? But on the inside, you're really hurting from discouragement, frustration, pain, turmoil within. I want to tell you today and challenge you, regardless of where the pressure is coming from, don't give up. Having to do all that you know how to do to stand, still stand. And say, in him I live, I move. And I have my being. Thirdly, on the onset of this message, I want you to note that the psalmist, he puts up a fight. Fight through your hurt. Fight through your pain. Fight through your hopeless feeling. Fight when you're discouraged. Fight when you're in your valley moments. Do I have any fighters here who desire to be like Paul and say, I fought a good fight. I've kept the faith. Don't let the enemy confuse your mind to the point where you want to give up. Throw in the towel because of pressure outside. Pressure's inside. Fight. You have to learn to fight for yourself. Mother is going to be gone one day. She can't fight for you. Father will be gone one day. He can't fight for you. But you've got to learn to fight for yourself. And then now I turn to Psalm briefly. And the, four, the first four things, I'm just going to give you a refresh of what we talked about. Spend a little bit more time. As we get to the fourth through the six things that I believe God wants us to hear as we work through discouragement, depression, 
and Zion. David starts out, or the psalmist, I should say, who wrote the psalm says, As the deer panteth after the water brooks, so panteth my soul after thee, O God. My soul thirsts for God, for the living God. When shall I come and appear before God? And if I can put a pause right there, the first thing I want you to write down is when you go through your anxiety, your depression, your discouragement, know that you can talk to God. Well, the writer declared, have a little talk with Jesus. Tell him all about our struggles. He'll hear our faintest cry. He'll answer by and by. We got to learn to turn our face toward God and know that our God is bigger than any problems that we have. We got to know that our God, he's a 24-7 God. His eyes are on the sparrow. And he watches over you and he watches over me. Do I have anybody who ever talked to God? Perhaps you didn't talk loud, but you learned to whisper to God. You learned to call him by his name. Some call him Jehovah Jireh, my provider. Oh, some call him Jehovah Nisi. Some call him Jehovah Rapha, my healer. Whatever you call him. Thank God that he's there. For he never leaves us alone. He said, I won't leave you nor forsake you. Oh, he's an old time God. And when you're talking to God, I want you to understand, believers, you can also ask him why. You can also talk to your soul and say, why should I be discouraged? <laughs> when Jesus is my portion, a constant friend is he. His eye is on the sparrow. And he watches over you. And he watches over me. I ask the question again. Have you ever had to talk to God? Have you ever had to lift your voices up in prayer? Say, Father, I stretch my hands to thee. No other help I know if thou withdraw thyself from me. Lord, where shall I go? Perhaps we have somebody who's talking to God right now, even in the midst of this worship service, saying, my God, my God, my God, supply my needs. Meet me in my valley moments. Help me to climb up the rough side of the mountain. So we have the psalmist. He's panting like a deer at the water brooks. He's saying, Lord, I need to talk with you. My soul is discouraged. I feel pain in my emotional belly. But God, I'm at the brook. I'm thirsty, God. I'm thirsty. Let me drink of you, God. Let me feel your mercy. Let me feel your loving kindness. Let me know again your grace. Even David at one point declared unto God, Restore unto me the joy of my salvation. Depression sometimes can weigh you down, and anxiety sometimes will beat you up until you feel disconnected from God. Don't give up. Fight. Tell somebody, fight. Fight! I may not understand what you're going through in your grieving moments, but fight! I may not understand the bad news you got from the doctor, but fight! I may not understand that you're in the unemployment line, but fight! I may not understand that your children may not be acting right, and your mind is disturbed because you've poured in your best to them. But fight! Stay on your knees. And put up a fight. Talk to God. Tell him all about your struggles. The second thing I want you to take note of is that in the midst of our depression, we can always affirm 
God's sovereign love for us. Look at verse 8. He says, yet the Lord will command his loving kindness in the daytime. He's affirming God's love. Even though he feels like I can't feel like he loves me right now, it feels like God is so far away from me. But I know that I know that I know he loves me. He says, again, the Lord will. At some point while I'm going through this moment of valley despair, this moment of depression, yet, which means, again, I'm looking for the Lord will command his loving kindness towards me. He goes on to say in the daytime and in the night. Somebody shout glory. But look at the transition in the same verse. His song shall be with me. The third thing that I want to tell you to do when you're going through depression, have a song to sing. Keep on singing. There are songs that we sing sometimes that people don't understand. But they don't understand your experience. They don't understand your faith journey. You're going through, sing a song. Reminded of Thomas Darcy, who lost his wife, lost his child. But then God took him to a room. Took him to the piano. Put a pen in his hand. And he wrote, precious Lord, take my hand. Lead me on, help me to stand. I'm tired and I'm weak. I'm worn through the storm, through the night. Lead me on to the light. Take my hands, precious Lord, and lead me home. The songs that our ancestors would lift up. That some of us today, we don't have a clue what it means. Because we weren't there. We didn't go through what they went through. And sometimes we'll make fun of, out of some of the songs they sang. We don't understand their experience. They would sing songs like it's hard to get along. No, it's not a gospel song. But it's a song of testimony that says it's hard to get along. Sometimes I feel like I just can't get along. But I know who God is. I'm going to make it somehow. His grace is sufficient for me. His strength is made perfect in our time of weakness. I often hear sometimes the generation of today, they look down on songs like, the Lord will make a way somehow. Nobody knows the trouble I've seen. Nobody knows but Jesus and me. You weren't there for that experience. But let me tell you a little bit about those people's experience in the song helped them to make, to make it through. After the Reconstruction, African Americans were displaced. By order of the president, he sent out a decree to give land make them landowners. And the general at that time stepped in and began to place them in certain areas, particularly throughout the low country that they thought was going to flood, like Hilton Head and the Isle of Palms. But those places are flourishing now. The story goes on to say, when folk who left the south of another race, they went up north, and when the war was over, some of them wanted to come back home. And when they got home, guess what they saw? People occupying the land that they left because it was decreed now that the land belonged to the African Americans. As a result, what happened? They were told, the African Americans were told to leave the property. So once again, they felt displaced didn't know which way to go, which way to turn. And during the town meeting, the story is told that a lady, a black woman, got up in the middle of the town meeting and began to say, nobody knows the trouble I've seen. Nobody knows but Jesus and me. Sometimes I'm up. Sometimes I'm down. 
Sometimes I'm level to the ground, but nobody knows. She's not saying trouble's going to last always. Don't laugh at the lady's story. Don't laugh at her song. You haven't walked in her shoes. But the truth be told, many of us, we are living because of the songs and the prayers of our ancestors. Prayers never expire. So learn to sing a song while you're going through. Learn to sing a song telling your story. And then fourthly, there's a word of encouragement that I note in here. Verse 5. It says, Why art thou cast down, O my soul, and why art thou disquieted or in turmoil in me? Hope in God. Hope thou in God. For I shall yet praise him for the help of his countenance. What is the psalmist encouraging me to tell you as a part of my assignment today? Keep preaching to yourself. <laughs> Listen to me. Don't wait until Pastor Wade comes. I'll come to the church on Sunday to preach to you. The times during the week you have to preach to yourself. Look at what the writer does. He speaks to his soul. He says, hope in God. In other words, soul, I command you to hope in God. We need to speak to our souls today. Those who are broken, command your soul to hope in God, to be encouraged. When you preach to your soul, don't forget to preach. Tell your soul, God is my refuge and strength. A very present help in the time of trouble. Preach to your soul. Tell your soul, they that wait on the Lord shall renew their strength. Mount up with wings as eagles, run and not be weary, walk and not faint, preach to your soul. Tell your soul, the Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He maketh me to lie down in green pastures, leads me beside the still waters, he restores my soul. Preach to your soul. In the midst of emptiness, tell your soul, but my God shall supply all of my needs according to his riches and glory in Christ Jesus. Preach to your soul. In dark times, tell yourself, the Lord is my light and my salvation. Whom shall I fear? Hallelujah! The Lord is the strength of my life. Of whom shall I be afraid? For in the time of trouble, he shall hide me. For in the time of depression, he shall hide me. For in the time of discouragement, he shall hide me. For in the time of hurt, he shall hide me. In the time of pain, he shall hide me. Wait, I say on the Lord. Tell your soul to wait on the Lord. Keep preaching to your soul. And the fifth thing I want to tell you that really struck my attention, remember, look at verse 4. Remember God, who he is. Remember the house of God. Follow me if you will. I want to share something with you that's on my tongue, from my spirit. It says, when I remember these things, I pour out my soul in me. For I, I had gone with the multitude. I went with them to the house of God. With the voice of joy and praise. The multitude that kept holy day. Then he goes on to tell us in verse 6. Oh my God, my soul is cast down within me. Therefore will I remember thee from the land of Jordan and of the Hermonites from the hill of Mazar. Remember God. But remember the church. And I know we are teaching you now and rightfully so and rightly so 
that this building is a place of worship. This building is not our salvation. But look at what the writer does. He remembers going to the house of God. What am I wanting to tell you today? It's all right for Facebook ministry. But listen to me. Internet and technology should never replace the worship place assembling for God. I want you to understand, God knew way in advance that COVID was going to happen. He knew way in advance that Facebook would come. But Facebook is not a replacement for the actual worship place of God. For this is a building that represents the grace and the mercy of God. The writer is saying, I won't forget. If I can break it down for you, he's saying, I've been to the house been to the temple. I praise God. There's something about coming together to worship God on one accord. For the Bible tells us, do not forsake assembling ourselves together. Amen. For our Facebook friends, I'm glad you're watching me on Facebook. But don't forget this place of worship. For this is the place that nurtured you when you lost your loved one and was filled with grief. This is the place where we baptized you. When you said, I do to God. This is the place where we perform your weddings under the umbrella and the grace and praying for you. But this is the place where we dedicated our children. Don't forget the building. The building is not our salvation, but the building is a symbol of hope and grace. That's why the steeple is up there pointing towards heaven. Say, don't forget your blesser who gives you your blessings. I remember coming here several years ago and I look out and I see many of you have grown spiritually. A lot of changes have taken place. Time is filled with some transition. But whatever, but whatever season we find ourselves in, don't forget the place that we call the church. Where we pray for each other. Where we lift one another up. Hallelujah. Don't forget how we gather here to sing praises unto God. Don't forget how we gather here to pray for one another. And I want to say to us today, 